What is going on everyone? It is me, the Lone Vault Wanderer, here with another Alone Time video. This series is of course the one where you can get to know me better as a person by asking me questions that I answer in video format. And before I get into today's question, I just want to say that the response that I got to one of my last Alone Time videos, that being the one that I talked about my career and relationship and channel in five years, the response to that video was absolutely phenomenal. I asked you all for questions for future Alone Time videos and the response rate was incredible. I got so many great questions. I got so much great feedback and positive comments as well about the videos that I'm doing, both the Lone Time videos and also the Let's Plays that I'm doing on my channel. And I just wanted to take the time to thank all of you for all of those kind comments and for all of the questions that you asked because with the changing content and with the, the lower amount of views that we're getting on my channel, it means so much to see a bunch of people such as yourselves that are probably watching this video right now still supporting me, still giving me great comments, still giving me great feedback it really does mean a lot and I just wanted to say thank you so much for supporting me through this time let's make 2017 a bigger and better year for this channel because I see success in the future it might take a hell of a long time but we're gonna get there and I know I can do so with your support so the question for today's video comes from Geo Gaza who asks on YouTube what was the hardest time in your life? Of course, if you want to ask me a question for a future Align Time video, pose that question in the comments below, and those will be the questions that I look towards for the next Alone Time. So let's answer Geo's question. What was the hardest time in my life? And I'll be honest, I had a bit of a tough time uh, thinking of hardest times that I've had in my life. I spent about 10 minutes on the couch, probably more than that, as I was watching Suits in the background, trying to think what was my hardest time. And to be honest, I don't think I can pin down a hardest time. I've had a lot of, you know, different hard times in my life and I'm sure many other people have gone through the exact same thing I'm not trying to sound special I'm sure that many of us have had our hardest times and many other smaller harder times throughout our life but I did remember one instance and one story which I wanted to share because hopefully I'm able to offer some advice for people that are in a similar position because most of us have gone through it or are going to be going through this story that I'm about to talk you through so the hardest time in my life or one of the hardest times in my life goes back to when I was in my penultimate or second last year of university. I've mentioned this a couple of times that I studied law and finance at university. And if you're in North America, I believe that's the equivalent to your college. In Europe, in the, in the UK, etc., I believe it's still university. But in any event, I was studying, okay? And I was in my second last year. And usually it's around that time when you're in your second last year slash penultimate year or your last year of university or studies. That's the kind of the time that you're looking towards getting a job beyond university, beyond the time that you're graduating. And that's really because a lot of graduate programs that companies and different employers are offering target those kinds of students, target students that are in their second last to last year of university, because that means they can plan for when those students graduate. They can say, all right, we have 20 graduates that are gonna be starting at this firm or starting at this company next year, and we can prepare for that. And that's usually how most graduate programs work. So I was in my second last year thinking, all right, I've studied law for about three years now, and I wanna to look towards the job. And again, that was the time when a lot of law firms were interviewing for graduate positions. For law students, those are called clerkships. For other industries, they might be called something different. You might just be called a graduate, but they were for clerkship positions. And I was looking towards getting into a law firm because that's what I wanted to do. One of the main reasons why I studied law was to become a lawyer. You know, I wanted to become a lawyer, become a solicitor, eventually become a barrister. That was one of the main reasons why I got into law. I have a cousin that's a lawyer and that's a fully uh, qualified solicitor and a barrister and also another cousin at the time that was looking to get into that field so it was a family reason for it I wanted to do it you know I, I believed I had a passion for it anyways but if you don't know and I'll tell you now the law industry is a cutthroat fucking business it really is in the sense that it's very difficult especially nowadays it's so difficult to get a job in the law industry and in fact one of the rough statistics and this may be vastly different uh, now but I remember the first class that I had in law school they let us know there's I don't know maybe a hundred plus of us in the, in the lecture room and they said to us about two-thirds of you will graduate from law school that's if you did graduate by the way a lot of people drop out mind you um, actually I think holy shit how many people dropped out 
maybe 20 to 30 percent i don't know anyways around there those are really rough figures but a lot of people did drop out anyways they did say that about two-thirds of you that graduate from this law school will not actually practice law will not actually work in a field that is law or legal related and that was not just because many students might get to the end of their tenure as a law student and say i don't want to do this anymore and mind you that happens a hell of a lot too but another contributing factor was that there are very limited number of positions in the law field. It's just a reality, especially at top tier firms. I'm sure that I could have gotten a job in a smaller tier firm, which I did have for two years, mind you, as a paralegal. But the point that the lecturer was trying to get across was that many of us simply weren't going to practice law. One of the reasons being that it's very difficult to get a job. It's very difficult to become a clerk and to become a solicitor and eventually a barrister, etc. Our system is a bit different to the United states we become solicitors and then we become barristers as opposed to north america where you're just both and you act as both your attorneys i believe that's how you operate anyways i'm getting sidetracked so there was that reality i knew that it was going to be very very difficult to get a job in the law field and at the time of my second last year of university when those clerkship interviews were taking place and all those job applications were happening i still believed that i wanted to become a lawyer in the traditional sense you know work in a top tier firm in a corporate firm whatever be a solicitor and work up the ranks so i started applying for jobs i started applying for clerkship positions in fact i distinctly remember that i was very worried that I wouldn't be able to get a job in the particular city that I was in, in the particular area of law that I wanted to get into. I really wanted to do commercial corporate law, nothing family law related or criminal law. I didn't really want to touch that, but I really wanted to do something around the nature of financial or corporate or commercial law, trading in investments, mergers and acquisitions, etc. But those kind of legal jobs weren't really existent in the city that I was in. So I applied to other major cities and I didn't get one single fucking interview. I think I applied for up to 20 jobs. And mind you, and I'm not trying to sound like, you know, I'm a smart ass, but I did a right at law school. I wasn't a HD student by any means. I wasn't a just a pass or a credit student. I got around a distinction average in law school. So I was okay. I wasn't top tier or anything like that. But I thought I at least did enough to warrant an interview with some of these firms in these other bigger cities. Again, where corporate and commercial law was more of a thing. But I didn't get one interview like one out of the up to 20 that I applied for. And I spent ages applying for all those interviews. And I vividly remember talking to my dad saying, I need to apply to these other cities. I need to apply to these other jobs because I'm not going to get what I want in the city that I'm in now, in our hometown. And I still didn't get them. And I was heartbroken. And I thought to myself, shit, what am I going to do? You know, I, I've studied law for three years now. I've got another two years to go, plus six months to get my graduate diploma of legal practice, which is necessary to be admitted as a lawyer. And I just got rejected, not even allowed to interview and then get rejected after the first or second interview. But I was straight out rejected. I didn't even get interviews for a bunch of companies that I applied for. And it sucked. It was such a sinking feeling. And I thought that all of my years of law school and all of the money that I was paying towards it, plus the job that I was currently in as a paralegal, I honestly thought that that was all going to go down the drain. But I managed to push past it and I started to apply for jobs in my hometown. And I did get some interviews, thankfully, that time around. I think out of maybe the five or six jobs that I applied for, I got about two or three interviews, which was all right. And I got some interviews to some top tier firms in the town that I was in. But with all of them that I actually got interviews for, I didn't get past the first round of interviews. I got to the first round and then I was told that you're not going to go to the second round of interviews because that's usually how it goes with law firms. You never really have one interview and then get a job. You usually have one, two, maybe three, maybe an interview day with team exercises, etc. It's a very, very rigorous process to ever be accepted into a law firm. And that's part of the reason why it's so hard. And again, because there are so few positions out there that law firms are accepting fewer and fewer graduates every year. So for all of the ones that I got interviews for, I never got past the first round. And it just made me feel exactly as shitty 
as I did when I applied for all those other jobs in the other cities and I didn't get interviews for. Because at the end of the day, it didn't matter. It didn't mean shit that I at least got interviews with these firms in my hometown. The fact is, is that I didn't get a job and I was worried. I was so scared, I was petrified, I was fearful that I'd never be able to get a job in this industry, that I'd never be able to work in this industry. I'd spent so many years studying and working my ass off with late nights and assignments and coffee and it was just scary. It was legitimately scary and I didn't know what to do because if I couldn't get a job in the industry where I actually wanted at the time anyways, really wanted to get a job, I wouldn't have known what to do with myself at all because yes, I could have applied my law degree to get a job in another industry, but at the time, that's not what I wanted to do. So I was heartbroken, legitimately heartbroken. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna sob for the rest of the year, for the rest of my second last year of university because there were no other job applications going around, at least in law firms, mind you. So I didn't know what to do and I decided to be a sook and I sobbed for a year, essentially. So that was one of the hardest times in my life. But I don't wanna stop there. I wanna let you know what happened beyond that because as you all know now, I am a lawyer and I'm kicking ass at it. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be egotistical or arrogant, but I'm doing a damn good job and I'm proud of myself for it. And let me tell you how I did it. So we get to the last year of university, again, doing law and finance. And because I didn't get any jobs in the legal field, and it was probably impossible at that stage to do so because for my cohort of graduates, most of the big T law firms, if not all of them, already hired their graduates for the following year. So there was no way I was getting a job with the firms that I wanted to work with. So I tried something different. I said, look, I am not going to be a sook for another year just because I can't get another job. I need a job when I graduate from university. I had no plans of traveling. I had no plans of doing nothing for a year. My intention to start earning money and to start building my career was to get a job right out of the gate, to get a job as soon as I graduated. So I started to apply for different jobs, for different graduate applications that were going around at the time. And I did the exact same thing as I did in the previous year. I applied for a bunch of jobs, but I'm also focused in my hometown. I kind of gave up on the fact of trying to go to bigger cities. I thought, look, I'm just gonna at least try and get a job here and we'll see what happens in future years. So eventually I did get interviews for these other jobs. And eventually I did get hired for these other jobs. I wasn't a lawyer, I wasn't working in the legal industry. I became a consultant. And I've said this in the past, but as much as I'm gonna say, because you know I can't get too specific with these things, given my situation. But as much as I'll say is that I was working as a consultant with the government. And this was never really a job that I grew up thinking I wanna be a consultant, to be honest. I mean, and I'm not saying that I didn't enjoy the job or that I wasn't appreciative for it and that I didn't work with amazing people during my tenure there but it wasn't the thing that I was really studying for, right? I mean, I had studied for law. Yes, finance was relevant to the consulting job. To be honest, consulting is a very generalist job that students with a lot of different degrees can get into. So you could be doing finance, you could be doing accounting, you could be doing psychology and still get a job as a consultant because what they're looking for are just smart people that can apply themselves to different situations. That's really the job of a consultant. And I was just applying that to government clients. So I got that job and I was happy. I moved on from that very hard part and dark part of my life where I couldn't get a job for so long and I actually succeeded. But then here's the kicker, right? As I was at these other jobs, I was still looking around for something else because again, like I mentioned, I didn't go to university. I didn't grow up wanting to be a consultant. I still wanted to try my hand in the legal industry because that's what I studied so long to do. So I kept my ear to the ground, still tried to do a great job at the consulting company. But I tried to see if there was anything else going around. But there was. There was this one company, that I can't say who it was, that was looking for someone. And funnily enough, this was a company that I had built connections with three years prior. Something that I'd never thought would happen. You know, an opportunity that at the time was non-existent, but it suddenly materialized just because I kept those connections just because I built those networks. So at the time I was probably eight months into my consulting career and this job opportunity came up and it was in the legal field and it would require me to become a lawyer. And it was in an industry that I was so passionate about. That was really the tipping point of me overcoming this hardest part in my life. Me going from a time of where I couldn't even get an interview to now actually being offered a job at this new company, doing exactly what I wanted to do. In fact, actually doing stuff that was even better than what I wanted to do previously, because this job is so unique. 
and I was so thankful for it and I was so glad that I gave myself a kick up the ass and pushed for that job because I've never looked back since and I'm so happy after being at this job for about a year now and I want to keep going and I want to keep kicking ass. And that's the underlying message that I'll give to all of you that are still watching at this point. Even when you experience hard times like I experienced, it's okay to feel like shit. It's okay to feel scared and petrified and to have a sulk and to have a whinge and to have a cry. But eventually, you need to get yourself back up. You need to get yourself off the ground and say, you know what, I'm not going to let this get the best of me. I'm going to push forward and get exactly what I wanted because eventually it's going to happen. If you're passionate about it, if you're committed, if that's what you want to do, you will succeed at it. It might not happen today and you might fail 10 times along the fucking line. But eventually it will happen, but you need to be committed. You need to see the end goal and you need to stick at it. You might go through jobs that you don't like. You might go through other experiences that you don't like. But if you have that goal in mind, you'll get there eventually and you'll be so much better off for it. So anyways, Way Sanders, that's all from me. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Again, ask me any questions for future Alone Time videos. I hope you enjoyed this one. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourself. And would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.